Uh, welcome everybody to episode six of the Technical Team Tech Talk podcast from Gas Safe Register. Uh, I'm Rob. I've been on episodes previously. And I'm John. I've also been on a few so far. So hello again. Yeah. I think you've been on more than me, actually, John, haven't you? Have I? Yeah. Lucky me. Uh, lucky you. So the idea of these tech talks is to just sort of um, highlight articles that have been in the magazine recently or that are going to be in the magazine and just talk about um, the subjects and try and just assist engineers with, you know, a bit more detail and try and sort of give you an idea of the type of calls we get into the technical team regarding uh, the, these different subjects. So, so this month we've just put out an article on mobile catering. Um, this time of year, you know, it's quite quite a lot of calls regarding mobile catering, food festivals, that kind of thing. So that was what we were going to talk about today was uh, just a little bit on mobile catering and the most frequent calls we get into the technical team. Um, so the first one we get, John, is, is always seems to be around qualifications. So yeah, um, yeah. So, so we get we get a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, most people do know, some people don't realise, just because you've got the commercial, the adequate quality commercial catering qualifications, like your Comcats 1 and 2 or whatever, doesn't doesn't give you the the competencies for commercial mobile catering. That's yeah. uh, because there's an LPG, uh, invariably. It will be uh, CON GLP CMC, commercial mobile catering. That's the qualification that gives you the competency to work on things like you know burger vans and little marquees and things like that so that's yeah. that's what you'd be looking for really because a lot of people don't realize of course that commercial mobile catering doesn't just cover your burger vans and your little kind of trailers with coffee machines in the back of it if you go to you know your, your summer fair on your local field and you've got the the people selling food there that would also be classed as commercial mobile catering and you do need to have the qualifications to to work on that yeah, so like you say, most people will have the commercial catering qualifications anyway, but some what some of them don't realise you need that changeover to mobile yeah. catering. That CMC right. is the important part for, for for the commercial stuff for the for the for the mobile stuff. Sorry, so for the mobile stuff, yeah, and like you yeah. say, mobile is always going to be LPG, whereas you know your guy that just got your commercial catering qualifications, that's just going to be like your restaurants and stuff like that, which is. Most probably going to be natural yeah. gas a lot of the time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, most of the time, what about it? So, yeah. So, yeah. we also get a lot of questions about the sort of the actual appliances. Um, uh, so, things like, you know, should it be fitted with an FSD? So, yes, they, it must be fitted with an FSD. Um, you've got things like where should they be fitted, um, especially on the kind of more marquee based appliances so you know we've got to be located on flat stable surface needs to be 600 mil from anything flammable such as your tents or any screens yeah. you might have to have a wind guard um so you know i live down by the sea they do one on the south sea seafront then there's a lot of food festivals down on, on the actual on the on the green down the front it does get quite windy so you might need to have a wind guard for that um adequate clearances for uh, removal of products combustion and and uh, also for allow for clearing for cleaning and removal and you might need to remove it to clean it might sound a bit silly if you're in the middle of a tent that you need to have adequate ventilation but you know sometimes that is the way yeah no um, well i think some of these marquees you know you go in the big ones that they are quite closed off aren't they you've got a few yeah, stores yeah. in in one tent so yeah no ventilation is important even if you're in a you know, like you say, a marquee or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, you've got to be got to be sighted, careful sighting, so you're not going to obstruct any, you know, any passage of people, so you can move about properly without being in danger of knocking stuff about. Um, yeah. You know, the, the other thing is pipe work. So the thing with pipe work and mobile catering, it's the same same principle. You still need to be able to clean the pipe work. You still got to have adequate clearances. Got a lot of things about can we use the question we do get quite a lot is can we use kind of press fit in in the mo mobile catering and catering it's quite common people use press fit now because you can't use press fit because you can't paint the press fit fittings um and it needs to be and it needs to can't be suitable it's not suitable for if you can use corrosive 
um, solvents and things like that, which a lot of the cleaners are. So generally, we say that press fit is not suitable for mobile catering. One of the one of the questions we get quite a lot, John, is uh, surrounding appliances. Um, so any appliances made after January 1996 should have a CE mark and a data plate. But we yep. do get calls quite a lot where they find the appliance doesn't have a data plate or a CE mark. Um, and what should they do in that instance? So in that instance, you'd need to risk assess the appliance. Um, that we, we get a lot of appliances that whilst it's, you know, it should be CE marked, you get a lot of them with the, you know, the internet and things like that these days, you can buy appliances off eBay and stuff like that and, and, and websites from God knows where. So if it's not CE marked, you need to risk assess it to ensure that, you know, it, it, it is working safely. You've got the adequate safety features. And that is the main thing really is to this working on the correct gas um, yeah. is another important thing. There is a technical bulletin about fitting um, new and secondhand commercial appliances, commercial cleaning appliances, because again, they're, they're, they tend to be on the more expensive side. So there is quite a large market for secondhand catering appliances. Yeah. So TB44, technical building 44, which is flame failure protection on new and previously used gas catering equipment. Follow that TB, that gives you great, there's some great information in that about regarding your, your safety devices and stuff like that that would need to be fitted. That's great. And it's just like you say, risk assessment stuff that you already spoke yeah. about earlier, like yeah, flame yeah. safety, stability. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. And like you said, the TB as well for people to follow. Um, so the, the next sort of frequently asked question we get on mobile catering is around ventilation. So the yes. ventilation requirements for um, mobile catering, obviously, like you said already, you still need ventilation requirements in, in a tent and make sure it's adequately yeah, yeah, yeah. ventilated. But with, a, with a, like a trailer, like a burger van or something like that, there are sort of specific ventilation requirements you're after. Uh, if, yeah. So, so what, what are those? So 25 centimetres squared per kilowatt. Um, okay. So that's your that's your requirements for any ventilation. So you add up all the all the heat input, and then you yep. use 25 centimetres squared per per kilowatt. And that's split over high and low. Quite important with the low one needs to be as low as possible because obviously where it's LPG um, oh, yeah. needs to be as low as possible. Now, obviously, if you've got an opening hatch. You, a lot of people say, well, I don't need a vent because I've got a massive, great big hole in the wall yeah, where you yeah. serve from. So that can be classed as your ventilation requirements. However, yeah. it would need to be um, it would need to be interlocked. So that's a new as in uh, UK LPG COP24 Part 3 that covers mobile catering. Obviously, a serving hatch is going to be quite specific to mobile catering. And then when that was updated last, there was a new that was added that if you could want to use the hatch, you can use the hatch as your ventilation requirements. But it does need to be interlocked. Yeah, like you say, that makes sense because if you do have a lot of appliances in a in a trailer, you, you're going to end up with a big big vent high uh, and low, aren't you? That's it. So, massive, great big holes in the walls because security is going to be then be a problem. So, yeah. you know, but if you've got a hatch, then that will cover as high and low ventilation. Um, there's also there, there can be a confusion. You says, well, you need to have high and low. Realistically, if half of your wall is an opening you're not gonna need to have additional ventilation for that but it, like I say, it must be interlocked yeah so if that hatch is down gas supply shuts the off. gas doesn't work yep oh well, yeah no that's fine as there's uh we do get that quite a lot actually i've had that yeah. question before with with people using serving hatches and finding they're not in locked so uh yeah it's definitely quite a common question we get yeah um and just the last one really for me is um We've had a lot of questions recently about the type of appliances in, in mobile sort of trailers, you know, burger vans or food festivals. Now, like you said at the beginning, uh, commercial catering qualifications. So there's different categories, Comcat 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Each of those categories is an ACS and they cover different type of appliances. Now, under Comcat 1 is water boilers and urns so they're sort of like your, your cylinder type things aren't they with a little tap you know for to make your tea cups and of coffee. tea and things like that. that's the one yes yes yeah now what what we do find is engineers are out there doing these um safety checks on these mobile trailers and they're finding uh a, a, like a domestic water heater so a multi-point or a single point usually yes. like a, a single point style. 
Little Celt yeah. star, the, the chef Celt stars, things like that. So that's, that's showing me age there, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. They... I'm, not, I'm not that old. <laughs> sure you don't. Sure you don't. So, but, yeah. um, but they, they come under your SEMWAT. Yeah. your what one um because that that's you know even though it where it's fitted um this kind of links into tb14b which we'll cover a little bit later doesn't matter where the appliance is fitted it's you, you've still got to to have the correct qualification to work on that type of appliance and still those sort of appliances that. come on un, come under somewhat yeah see so even though you've got an engineer that's got his his commercial catering He's got his changeover. He still needs his domestic core and his domestic send what, like you say, to cover that so, domestic water heater. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've had that question quite a lot, actually. And it's I coming quite it, a lot lately, hasn't it? Quite a lot lately. Yeah. Because you, you, I think I think a few engineers thought that it was covered under water boilers or water urns, but you know that's yeah. a different type of appliance. So um, so yeah, that's uh, that's some good questions we've covered off there in the mobile catering. Um, yeah. Like I say to all the viewers, we've just done an article on it. So if you, you're looking for a bit more detail, um, check out the the latest issue of the Registered Gas Engineer magazine. There's an article on there in there um, all about mobile catering. Got some diagrams, give you a bit more bit more detail and a bit more information that we haven't covered today. Um, so. In other news, um, so we will be attending the FEX show in London and Manchester. Uh, so, John, you're doing London? I'm doing the London and the, and the Olympia on the 11th to 12th of September, I think, and you're covering the Manchester one? Yeah, the, I, I'm... It's the Old I'm, Trafford, is it? Old Trafford, yeah, 9th and the 10th of October. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, come and have a chat with us. Say hello. Um Grab your free pens and pencils and pads and get some freebies. Maybe even yeah. a sticker. Yeah. Everyone loves a sticker. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're, 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 we're there just to sort of answer any questions anyone's got. So, um, so we'll like, also, yeah. We are also doing talks there. Um, we're doing a, a, some sort of presentation, I believe, uh, at both of them. So come and have a look. Don't care class too badly. Uh, come, come, come and have a listen to what we've got to say. And yeah, yeah we'll see you there. Yeah, no, it'd be good. And then, uh, John, do you just want to run through the, the yeah. recent TBs or updates so, you've issued? Yeah. So Technical Bulletin 14B, which is your working within Scope TB, has finally been published. Uh, it's been out uh, a little while now. We've had some very positive feedback come through that. Um, yep. That just kind of goes through working generally. So domestic boilers in a non-domestic setting, what you'd be required uh, if you've got multiple domestic boilers um, so it's a pretty good, interesting read. Uh, it's pretty clear. There's some good flow charts and some good questions and answers at the end of it. Some frequently asked questions to, to help you through. So TB14B is available now on the website. So if you log into the engineers area, go to technical information, you'll find all the TBs and safety alerts and stuff like that down there. Um, IGEM G11, which is the Gas Industry Unsafe Situations Procedures, the GOSP, has just had an update in June. Uh, so that's easy to find. That's on there. That's a free of charge document. So that's that's there. You can find that on the IGEM website. Um, a few minor changes in there. Uh, I'll be writing an ISU with an industry standard update as soon as possible, probably this this week. So that'll be out soon. However, that has required TB55, which is duties of a landlord. That has needed to be changed because one of the major changes in the new document is that the visual risk assessment. Uh, so what it now says is you shouldn't say that an appliance is safe to use unless you've done your full 26 nine checks. Mm. This is particularly relevant for, say, a tenant's own appliance. Uh, yeah. So if you've got a tenant's own cooker and they say, no, I don't want you to test it or, you know, um, but the landlord will say, I want it to be on the on the landlord safety of gas, gas safety record. Then what you would do is a visual inspection. Now, previously, the advice was you just say visual inspection only across it. Safety use. Yes. The new guidance is that you can put safety uh, visual inspection only, but on the safety use, you should put N.A. Because yeah. you can't say that an appliance is safe to use if you haven't done the full safety checks. It is recognised that a lot of people now will use the digital pads, um, you know, where 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 you can't can't alter what the settings are. 
Um, so it's recognised that this might not be able to be done immediately. However, we hope they're hoping that what will happen is over time that will all back get back to norm, back to change, just so that the NA is what you would need to to select on that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, like you say, I suppose it might take a while for you know these, these programs or software that people use. Yeah. You know, you so might they all they all need to be updated tweaks. quite often these days, don't they? So, but what you'll need to do is is that eventually that will need to change. To it says NA, so you can't. So the the guidance is now that you should not be saying an appliance is safe to use if you haven't done the full twenty six nine checks. Okay, and that TB is out now. TB fifty five, yeah, that's been updated. So it's an older TB, but it has been updated again. Yeah, you'll find that in the technical information on the um, on the website. Uh, that will uh, an updated version will go into the next magazine issue, which I think is now September. It's going to come out. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, and and that's it from us on this episode. Um, as always, if you've you know got any feedback, you want us to discuss uh, a certain topic or a certain subject, um, just email us at technical at gassaferegister.co.uk. And also, if you've got any feedback on any of our services, like the website, um, or marketing or you know any anything that you can think of that you think oh do you know what that might be better if it was done a different way again just email us at technical at gassaferegister.co.uk uh thanks for listening and hopefully we'll see you in episode seven yep see you later bye-bye